So guys, where do you think that people get their information nowadays? If you want to like start bulking, you know, you see TikTok. Somebody, you think it's TikTok? Yeah, I think so. Nowadays. But I remember that I used to get my information from bodybuilding.com and from Muscle Magazine. And I remember reading on Muscle Magazine one day that Arnold Schwarzenegger, when he was bulking, uh, he had to stimulate the muscle. You know, he had to, you know, confuse the muscle a little bit. So he would do 10 reps of 135 pounds on the squat, 10 reps of 225. Uh, 10 reps at 315 and he'd work his way up to 10 reps at 405 and then he'd bring it back down to 10 reps of 315, 10 reps of 225 and 10 reps of 135. And then I come to find out that later in the future, he probably never really did that. And somebody just put his name next to this program just so that they could get more posts and reviews on the internet. And um, yeah, so today I really want to maybe give an example of what a bulking program would be like. So this way, People don't go out and confusingly do a program that they think that their idol is doing or on Fit Talk. Um, and, you know, you can avoid the mistake of trying to do that because that's exactly what I did. I tried that. I didn't really make it that far. I got up to 315. Uh, my legs were how burning. many how many reps? I got to 10 and then <laughs> I, I tried to put the 405 and then I got to three reps. It, it wasn't it wasn't pretty because I, I, I failed it. I failed it. <laughs> my legs were. How long ago was this? <laughs> Dude, this was what I was like. 19 or 20. I'm actually impressed that you're squatting 405 at like 19. Yeah, I squatted my first 500 pounds at uh, 20, 21. That's was that I, at Adelante? No, no. At Adelante, I hit 550. And I wasn't even 21. I was 20. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Cue music. Mental rap. <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen, 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 gentlemen. Come on, ça va. Hello. Come on, ça va, mon sios. Uh, muy bien, gracias, y tú? <laughs> I'm good. Did that good? work? <laughs> good? No, that wasn't it. That was close. That was close. No, that was French. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. How are you guys doing? How's your week coming up? Um, Good. It's only Tuesday, so yeah. I figured that, you know, not really much development happening since. Oh, like, actually pretty exciting. Um, I'm a whole ass uncle right now. You're an uncle? Oh, yeah, I'm a whole ass uncle. Oh. Congratulations. Your sister? Yeah, my sister. Okay. We had her uh, first kid. Well, that's, that's one way to get weight loss. Yeah. 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 Lose nine pounds. How, how much is she? Did he or she? Boy, girl. Which one? He was. He? Um, I think he was like seven and a half or something. Seven and a half pounds. Yeah, okay. which I'm actually impressed by because my sister is only like five foot on a good day. Really? Yeah. Interesting. 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 Um, guys, yeah. any client wins for the week? Oh yeah, we have a couple of our athletes prepping for NJ States coming up in the few weeks. I think everyone has been peaking, and for the most part, all three, four of them right now competing. All hitting PRs. Okay. Pretty exciting. PR zones. <laughs> pretty exciting to see that they're hitting their PRs like this far out. Okay. Um, which is exciting, especially since two out of them have been battling back from injuries this last cycle. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's been awesome to see like, hey, like one, the comeback and then two hitting some PRs like far out in training. Okay. Okay. Very solid. Very solid. That's exciting. Um, so folks, today we're going to jump into the topic of the day. We are we have something a little different for you all. Um, now, one thing that I forget to mention every episode is oh, submit some you, you Everybody who's listening to the episodes have some way uh, you can submit questions. Um, I would we would really love, actually, if you give us questions for future ideas for episodes. You know, there's ideas that we think that will benefit you wherever you are on your fitness or health journey. And then there's ideas of like where you're at that you're going to give us because this is where you're currently at. And uh, I think that's how I work best is when people tell me what they're struggling with and I give them a solution or viable solutions. Um, I'm sure that's how you guys work. Um, so in this case, we're going to do something a little different. All right. We went over, we usually like we talk, talk about different topics every uh, episode. In this case, I, I, what I really like is I remember that um, Neil was studying for his bachelor's of science degree in exercise science. And one of the things that they would do in some of his classes, was they give him case studies. Right. So um, not probably not as nuanced as those case studies, but um, similarly. So 
I'm going to provide you guys with some background on two individuals that I've created. Um, and I want you guys to give me a program. Uh, the goal here for both of them is to gain muscle without gaining fat. Okay. Um, a sub question to that, that, um, some, um, individuals like some individuals want some clarity on is, will I get too bulky when I'm bulking? And especially women, I feel like women are more concerned about getting too muscular. Um, I, although actually, you know what, to be honest with you, I don't think that's the case anymore. I really don't think that's the case. I think that was the case early in two thousand, the earlier 2000s where 2010s. Yeah. Yeah. Hear yeah. It a little bit. You still hear it a little bit. Sometimes. Okay. I, I don't really hear it too much. I actually hear a lot more women feeling proud of muscle, you know? And so I think that's something that we should promote is that there is, um, some beauty behind looking fit and strong, you know? So um, let's start with the first individual. Devin Williams, 29 year old male that weighs 150 pounds at the height of 6'1". He works a desk job from Monday to Friday. He loves rock climbing and wants to gain 20 pounds of muscle. So that would mean that he's aiming for 170 pounds. Um, a little background on Devin. Uh, he used to be play baseball in high school. Uh, he once completed a Spartan race, so he's not completely out of shape. You know, he's in some shape. Um, in the last six months, he's tried taking walks with his dog as a means of being more active because he works from home. Um, prior injuries. He's had a prior meniscal tear, uh, which just to put that into layman's ter terms, uh, it means that he has some issues with his knee. Um, and why does he want to gain the 20 pounds? Well, he wants to be healthy for his new family. He's got a partner, he's got a dog, and he's got two twins, two newborn twins. Oh, cute, um, cute, cute. So, Dan, let's start with you. What program would you suggest that Devin Williams follow if he wants to gain 20 pounds of muscle? Uh, probably one given by the district training facility would be number one. <laughs> Customizable, that's what we do here. No, no, <laughs> no but uh, on a serious note, so. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting a little more specific i think some sort of resistance training and then also like um sprinkling a little bit of cardio in as well just for overall health and then um vascularity as well cardiovascular health there we go um but so when i was designing this program you know just assuming like some other factors how many days a week you want to train um i was thinking something along the lines of a push pull and a full body day so when i say push a full body push so some sort of lower body squat, some sort of single leg motion. So like a Bulgarian split squat lunge, depending on how the meniscus is feeling. And then uh, some sort of upper body push, a vertical and horizontal. So and just relatively keeping it simple, like it could be a dumbbell press, overhead press, push up, anything like that. So especially since he hasn't been exercising in the last about six weeks. Mm -hmm. Reason that I say two to three weeks or th two to three times a week makes sense just because this guy hasn't been working out in about six months. So we don't want to just toss him into something too aggressive right away. I'm sure he says, hey, I want to work out four to five days a week because I want to gain about 20 pounds of muscle. You know, but you know, we throw him from zero to 60, he's probably going to burn out or get injured. So two to three day times a week, I feel like one day a week is going to yield some sort of benefit, but more likely than not, if he's looking to gain 20 pounds, he's probably not going to see the stimulus that he's looking for. Yeah, and I think what makes sense about that too is um, you don't necessarily need a lot when you are new to the lifting scene. Oh. You know, just a small Fucking amount newbie of gains, man. The newbie gains, yeah. Small amount of stimulus will reap big, big results. Um, Nutrition-wise, do you have anything to say to that? Um, no. <laughs> okay. I'm just kidding, I do. <laughs> when it comes towards like nutrition, we want to think about like if he's looking... I guess like one big thing that I always like to talk to people whenever they're saying, hey, I don't want to gain any fats. You know, fats not necessarily one a bad thing. And then two, if you're getting a little bit of additional body fat while you're bulking, it's almost going to happen depending on the rate that you're looking to go down. Just because, you know, somebody says, hey, I want to gain 20 pounds of muscle, but they're not willing to gain any fats. It's an easy way to kind of get a little discouraged if you're not seeing the weight that you're putting on as quickly as you'd like. So I think it's also important for him to kind of get a clear understanding of, all right, what do you want to actually look like? Do you have maybe a physique that you're looking to get towards? Because like their body fat percentage may be a little bit lower than, you know, what that ideal body fat percentage actually looks like. You know, being 6'1", 150, he's probably pretty fucking lean. Like that's that's pretty skinny right there. Mm -hmm. um, so like one getting an idea of that, but then if he's really dead set on, hey, I don't want to gain any additional body fat or as minimal as possible. You know, giving him the time frame of like, hey, like how much body weight do you want to put on? 
are you willing to sacrifice um, body fat and then timetable? Um, realistically, most research shows like half a pound to two pounds per month is realistic for muscle gain without body fat <clears throat> being put on. So like at least the first like few months will probably be on like closer to that two end. Okay. Um, since like we said, like the stimulus is kind of low, but for him, aiming to have like 150 to 170 grams of protein and then aiming for around, I think I had tw 2,000 to 2,300 calories. Okay. Any special way that you came up with those calorie amounts or protein amounts? Uh, just put them in macro calculators. But the reason I say between those ranges and usually what I do with most clients to start off is, you know, one, get a food log to kind of get a general baseline of where they're eating. Um, if they start logging their food and obviously, obviously there's going to be some sort of variation to it. Um, it gives us a kind of idea of, all right, so this is how much they're eating. This is how much they're gaining or losing. This is where their general maintenance is at. Uh, the calories that I chose were from just a calculator. Okay. Makes sense. I think I got it from Precision Nutrition. Okay. Scotty, what Mug say boy. you? Again, just to repeat because we had a little <clears throat> introduction, long answers. Um, twin, um, he's 29 years old, 6'1", 150 pounds, works from desk job Monday through Friday, loves rock climbing, and wants to gain 20 pounds of muscle. So I did not do a program for him because if you're good at something, never give it out for free. Ah. <laughs> okay, so here's my program. <laughs> Damn. Um, so wait, does that mean you're bad at this? <laughs> I, you gotta shut yourself at the foot there. I'll send you the invoice. Um, no, so Dan had a lot of really good answers too, and everything that I was about to say next, like he just like nailed it. So I also work with a lot of clients who we would consider these level one nutrition clients. So a lot of them aren't doing very specific calorie macro. Um, they're not weighing their meals every single time. They're kind of focusing on different uh, habits. But to start from the uh, training side of things, obviously, when you have this goal, there are two main sides or three, you could say training, nutrition, at least, or training, nutrition, and recovery. From the training side of it, definitely agree with Dan, two to three days a week. If you're going one time a week, you're kind of just churning your wheels. You're feeling like you're doing something, but you're not really getting a high enough training stimulus. The way I like to describe it to clients or paint that picture is if you wrote down everything you did in a given day, and that has to do with every piece of food you shove in your mouth, every weight you lift, every activity you do, if nobody has seen you, but they just read that description, they should be able to draw what you look like or have a pretty good picture. So if you're that guy who's going to fast food every single night, you're writing that down, you're saying I'm watching, I'm binge watching entire episodes on or seasons on Netflix and I'm just ordering out like you can draw a pretty obese person. But if you describe everything you do and it's more leading towards something that looks like a bodybuilder or somebody who actually has some uh, some semblance of fitness level, that's those are habits that are going to lead more to your uh, results. So for this guy, if he's got a Monday through Friday desk job, likes rock climbing, so maybe he's moderately active, maybe on the weekends, but he doesn't do any weight training, introducing that one to two time, or sorry, that two to three times a week in, in the gym to get some training stimulus on his muscle is going to be beneficial. I think maybe there's a ramping period with this guy, so I would probably start with two times a week more or less a full body type routine to make sure you're hitting every movement pattern and at least introducing his body to those movement patterns. Um, usually starting with the bigger exercises first, the bang for your buck exercises. So if there's somebody who has a big training background, maybe they've done Olympic lifts, those I like first. This guy, probably not so much. I would probably start with your big, um, uh, your bigger lifts, your bench deadlift squat, maybe some uh, big single leg lifts or single um, split stance lifts as well progressing towards your upper body push pull, progressing towards your core and maybe a little bit of cardio at the end since he doesn't want to gain a lot of muscle. I would probably say that the faster he wants to gain that muscle, the more he has to be willing to put on a little bit of body fat, especially Dan mentioned he's 6'1", 150. I graduated high school at maybe 5'10 and a half at around 150, 155, and I was running track every single day, and I was shorter than this guy and also had very little body fat. Um, so he's he's probably not got a lot of body fat to begin with. He might be somebody who we would consider this ectomorphic type style. I don't try to somatotype people as much anymore, but I do look at people with that body type, and they tend to respond well to almost forcing them to be in a calorie surplus. They need to almost find strategic ways to guarantee that they're in a surplus. Otherwise, they might 
eat a little bit, gain a little bit. And these are the people who might gain five pounds. And then all of a sudden they find a way to lose 10 pounds really quick because they tend to have these active lifestyles or, or very fidgety personalities. They have certain habits where maybe they binge eat and then they don't eat for extended periods of time. So I would look at that. I like what Dan said too, is to get that true snapshot. I want to see this guy maybe write down or food log, use something like a MyFitnessPal to journal what he's doing at least minimum for three days to get a decent understanding of what he's doing Monday through Friday. If he's working at a desk job, I want to understand what foods are available to him, what things are challenging for him. Maybe it's he's always on the go. Maybe it's the snack room or lunch room always has bad food in it. Maybe we need to get him something he could have at his desk. So we want to understand that before we can really develop his nutrition plan. But we also want kind of a we want to work him from wherever he's at right now to a balanced um, proportionate plan that has a good amount of lean protein, has some good quality carbs, and maybe slowly over the course of time starting to increase those carb portions, making sure that he's he's got enough protein that we talked about in that previous episode where most of us kind of recommended that one gram per pound. Um, if we're talking about his prior meniscal tear, I was talking about those big lifts before. so. With meniscal tears, the meniscus is really just the cushion between the knee. Um, so it's like a shock absorber that gives us a little bit of extra support. A lot of people over time do either wear that out a little bit or they get a tear. If you get a tear and you get it cleaned out, that's a meniscectomy. You have a little bit less shock absorption in there and you're usually going to be a little more predisposed to arthritis <laughs> later on in life. So if he's already experiencing symptoms, we want to make sure maybe that's low impact. And maybe if it's a posterior meniscus tear towards the back of his knee, we want to avoid some deep squatting because that's where you put some pressure on that. Um, if we're talking cardio during his program, we want low impact considerations because if he's squatting and then I'm throwing him on a treadmill or tell telling him to run around his town, that's probably going to beat up the knee a little bit. And this guy's not going to last through the entire program. Um, if we're looking for healthy weight gain, we generally say, and the research has shown, it's within that one to two pounds per week that you could gain. But again, if their goal is now, I want to gain that 20 pounds of muscle without um, putting on body fat, again, that's gonna narrow that down. You're going to put on a little bit less each week, but it's, it's going to be a little more fine-tuned and um, we might have to spread out that goal over the course of time. Um, I just wanted to st jump in. I, I like what you did there. Um, one of the things that I noticed that you did wasn't necessarily uh, you just kind of give him a program and you tell them to go run with it. Um, you analyze his personal traits as it pertains to his physical traits. You know, you, you describe this individual, even though you don't know this individual, and he's completely made up um, based off of uh, his his physique. Uh, you probably assume that he is a naturally just lean Uh fidgety. You mentioned he was fidgety individual and he would uh, kind of be wishy-washy with his food or should I say with his nutrition. He wouldn't really be consistent in that he will binge eat for a period of time and then probably not eat for another period of time. And I, I think that's so interesting because you basically describe the type of person I am. Um, if I do not stay committed to a regimen or a program, um, I get very small. I get very lean. I get very tiny. Um, as you can see, we're all long. My, I'm pointing to my brother. We're all long. Right we're all lanky and he's fidgety. Exactly. That's and if he doesn't eat, Eric's leg is literally shaking. Yeah. Eric's leg is literally shaking. This is what we all do, you know? And if he doesn't eat and I'm putting my brother, Eric, um, our producer, um, you probably lose weight very quickly, right? You probably you got to put your mouth closer to the mic. Yeah. You, <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's very interesting that you were able to make these uh, you were able to hone in into these assumptions very easily, very quickly. And then, you know, you, you talked about how changing the lifestyle, not necessarily just changing the choices, but also envisioning that future of, hey, I'm, gonna I'm a bodybuilder now, even though they're not a bodybuilder. But it's not necessarily for the sake of taking things to the extreme of being a bodybuilder, but taking things to some level that brings them closer to being more conscious of their weight. So hopping into the next scenario. So we got a 25 year old female that weighs 100 pounds at a height of five, four. She works as a warehouse manager six days a week and loves to play jazz. Her name is Janet Lee. Um, her background involves volleyball in high school. Uh, she's been doing Class. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for three years. So keep get this, get this. She's actually pretty active, more active than uh, Devin. She's a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and she has an occasional lower back pain. Um, why 
does she want to gain weight? She wants to gain about 20 pounds, similar to Devin. Mm. Because although she laughs, she hates being referred to as little or small. Okay. 20? 20 pounds. Yeah, she wants to get quick, out, quick, uh, quick uh, They're fast. They're fast. Gets what, about like 120-ish? Yeah. What is that, bantamweight? Okay. All right. So first, uh, let's go back to Dan. Dan, right. give me your program. Oh, shit. I closed it out. <laughs> All right, Scott, give me your program. I was really hoping to build off of him. All right, uh, let's I can build off of Dan. So I like, like that you threw in that she plays jazz. I'm going to divert and again, look at the psychology behind it. So la la. with this person, she used to play volleyball, apparently. Uh, what's her age? 25. 25. So through college, didn't play collegiate sports, maybe recreationally, but did Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So I look at and also likes jazz. I look at this as somebody who actually has a good handle on stress management. So maybe she can handle a little bit more volume. Maybe we factor that into our program. No. So especially something like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, it's, I mean, you've you've done it maybe. The Taekwondo. We, the taekwondo. we pogged. We, either way, martial arts, for those who haven't done it, it is pretty rigorous on the yeah. body. I would describe Brazilian Jiu Jitsu more or less as like a physical chess. You are tired after it, but you kind of get this euphoric feeling afterwards. You're, you're body is feeling pretty good you could be tired but it there is some form of recovery in that too but you also need to recover from that so anytime we're designing a training program especially for the athletes i'm working with right now we want to factor in what they're doing outside of there that could also be contributing to stress on the body and then what things are contributing to stress management so maybe her doing jazz that might be stress management maybe brazilian jiu-jitsu could be a little bit of added stress but she's doing a lot of isometric holds she needs a lot of range of motion for that too um also because of the injuries that could be associated with that we don't want her going into that incredibly sore incredibly um maybe having some predispositions because she just did a massive lift or maybe she's a little weaker going into that uh training session so she might also it, again either of these individuals if they're not currently doing a resistance training routine we would want to find that out ahead of time probably makes sense to ramp them in again, probably makes sense to do that two to three times a week. If she's already doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, maybe she's somebody who could be introduced to one to two times a week and then scaled up later on. If her goal is for gaining pounds of muscle, I would say resistance training is, is key or the priority there. We would also have to talk about what her priority is because she might come to us and say, I want to gain this, but Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is still my priority. And then maybe that says, okay, well, you're not going to get as fast dramatic results as you would if you had maybe were a sponsored bodybuilder, you had every nutrition, every meal planned for you, designed by a uh, personal chef, or you're a an actor or actress who has six weeks to prepare for the superhero role. You have everything at your disposal to make that your number one goal and priority. You can get the fastest results possible by any means necessary. For this, she's got some other things in her life. She she has a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Maybe she has friends and stuff outside of that. Maybe she has social situ situations that we want to take a look at as well. Um, but she also has some lower back pain. So I can't really jump her right into these large axially loaded lifts. That's the ones where you have a bar on your back or you're holding a weight that kind of compresses the spine a little bit. I might want to take a look at the reason behind that first, maybe get some medical clearance, see what type of treatment she's done for that in the past. So main things that are jumping out, maybe she has a disc type issue. Maybe she just has tight muscle spasm or it could be related to what she does on a daily basis, which could be working in a warehouse. Maybe she's holding stuff in front of her stocking shelves. Uh, that's going to get your lower back to fire a lot just to keep her holding things up. That might not be a disc issue at all. That could just be her back is kind of constantly going into extension. We need to get her into flexion a little bit, do some breathing exercises, reverse exercises, backward sled drag, stuff like that. So even though her goal is to build muscle and a lot of the, the best exercises for that are going to be your squats, your deadlifts, your big exercises, those are all also extension based. That might be a lot on top of her um uh, her, her job that you said was stocking shelves, uh, or warehouse, a warehouse, manager. warehouse manager. So I would just want to make Big sure boxes. So either she's lifting Big the boxes box. or maybe she's managing and having other people do that. I'd want to pay attention to what she's doing frequently, but there are ways to load the legs in more of a, a flexion bias going more into reverse stuff like that, that, that just helps balance out and not contribute more to the problem there. Um, as far as nutrition, Again, same story. I want to see what she's doing right now. We we could take all her metrics, look at her height, weight, um, look at her 
predicted activity level, look at her desired amount of um, meals per day or, or things like that. And we can go through these different calculators, the one we use at the district, the precision nutrition calculator, and we'll get kind of a ballpark target goal of calories. But at the end of the day, I want to know what their maintenance is right now based on what they're doing. So I think the best snapshot for that is really looking at their activities, looking at their current training level, what they're doing currently, and then also looking at what they're eating on at least a three, three day ba basis, maybe longer, maybe as much as a week, depending how much they're comfortable with. And then saying, okay, this is what in inputs and outputs, what uh, calories in calories out are contributing to their current body weight. And now I have a starting point to either add some calories or add some resistance. Now on top of that, and I also wanted to mention for the previous guy, that's going to be a fluid number because we're adding in training. That means we're adding in some calories out. We're going to tip the scale on the opposite end of that. So we don't necessarily just need to put him or her into a calorie surplus based on their current resting. We might have to adjust for the added resistance training, added calories out that we're, we're putting on based on that, which is also why a ramping process might be effective because they can slowly adjust to that instead of doing something dramatic, jumping into a quick routine where one week they're they're burning X amount and the next week they're burning a lot more than that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Danielson, let's hear your program. Mine doesn't sound too uh, as extensive as Scott, so I don't want to go anymore. Um, I like piggybacking. You no, know, a lot of the points that he was making, I actually, you know, I wanted to jump in and say the same thing, but then, yeah, he just kept hitting each point off the top. And word for word, what I said about what he you said. You know what you got to do? You just got to <laughs> say it louder, repeat it louder than he does. So anyway, <laughs> one of the, so like, uh, kind of like what we were talking about with Devin before, one of the first things we always want to take a look at for, what's her name again? Janet? Janet Lee. Janet Lee is kind of taking a big snapshot, uh, snapshot. <laughs> of her overall lifestyle to kind of figure out like hey like who is she so i like the fact that she's already active she has a lot of hobbies she seems more interesting than devin to be honest um so it sounds like you know i like the fact that she's coming from martial arts also i think for oh, fuck scott you actually literally just said this people who have been able to do this you know they more likely than not can probably handle a lot more than somebody else who's never done any kind of combat sports sports in general or at least from what i've noticed like they're able to handle a little bit more on that end i'm gonna flip that because maybe we're taking this all wrong maybe she's somebody who actually has really low self-esteem she played volleyball in high school didn't play in college for who knows what reason maybe we'll take a look at that Damn. but then is doing Damn. brazilian jiu-jitsu and then on top of that she wants to gain 20 i'm pounds leaving i was gonna want, say because she you missed that be important part small you missed that important she part. she doesn't want to be considered small but 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 it's also the most insecure people who are the most ferocious you got to remember that correct they have yeah. something to prove but maybe what's best for her is not to gain 20 pounds and it's our job to let her see that and maybe help her find some confidence and some other things and maybe slowly get her there. well you know the thing is is a lot of people come up with these goals they just kind of throw mud on the wall and see what sticks so they come up with the 20 pound that's where i was going from is like 20 pounds okay. they don't know that they want a big squat don't know bench what or 20 deadlift. pounds look they like. don't know what 20 pounds look like they just say hey i want to weigh 120 pounds or i want to weigh x amount of pounds or sometimes and the then doctor will tell them that as well should, like you're underweight you're overweight sometimes they're looking at some random ass that. scale from bmr and then they're on their way or not is it bmr and then they're on their way. And then yeah. on their journey, BMI. they discover BMI, fuck me. <laughs> that they don't really care about the weight. They really don't care about the weight. They actually care more about other things. Maybe they care more about the aesthetics. Maybe they care more about the athleticism. Maybe they care more about the strength. Maybe they care about the technique. Maybe they care about many other or, factors or the and they fall in love with something else. something else. Or the community or do something else. Honestly, like yeah. sometimes the best thing that somebody can do when starting a new program and they haven't done anything is just fucking do something. Okay, so for Janet Lee, I'm sorry, guys, we got deviated from the course. Janet Lee, give me a program, Dan. I want her just to start lifting. You want her to start lifting? Yeah. Okay, how would you program because, her Because, um, well, no, so similar to with, uh, what's his name, Devin again. Um, probably start her off with somewhere between two to three times a week. Factor in for the fact that obviously she is going to be already doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. What kind of split? Uh, if we're doing two days a week, then probably some sort of push and pull as well. I usually like to do, do you something. like three days? Push, pull, full. You don't okay. do leg, you don't have your own sole leg. I day. like I to, okay. the reason that I do this and I, I find it's beneficial is just because if somebody's only coming in a couple days a week, I'd like to get a little more overall volume, but kind of space it out. Instead of crushing somebody with one muscle group where it's like they can't walk for the next few weeks, more likely than not, they're not going to want to come back in. 
um, especially for somebody brand new. So I usually like to go in with a full body workout where they can feel like they worked, they can feel get a good training stimulus, but then not feel like one particular muscle group is absolutely dead where they're not going uh -huh. to want to come back. See, I, I agree with you, but I also recently switched several of my clients who are doing three days a week to a big lower day, big upper day, and then a full day. And this like, is somebody like new that though. That, correct. That, that, that was exactly what I was going to say. I think like, cause this is a client who started to maybe see a little lower training stimulus. He kind of adjusted to, to the routine and the training program. And then we made the switch and he came in and basically said, my legs were crushed and my upper body was crushed. And then that full body day kind of hit most of the like, accessory stuff, the split stance exercises, the ones that are just better for being a human, the triplanar movements. And it kind of like just hit all these other areas that maybe we needed to just top off, but we were able to get everything in a week and the training stimulus was very high. But I do think that's more for a high performing athlete or somebody who's progressed through an initial training phase. So just generally speaking, <laughs> I told what I was about to say. I didn't want to interrupt, but I was so excited to say it. Just generally speaking for the both of them, because we did just we spoke very broad about each individual. But now let's speak even broader volume. How much volume in terms of training would you prescribe each individual? Uh, not each. Let's say both of them. Let's say both of them. Let's kind of treat them both the same. It kind of varies. I mean, typically, like a good rule of thumb, I feel like is for per muscle group, maybe 10 sets per week 10 sets per week okay yeah. okay that's generally what the research says is enough to create muscle growth on that area so i okay. think you'd want to at least work up to that and then again factor in what they can handle so we're tracking how well they're recovered coming into a session the first couple of weeks we're really taking a look at i felt this amount of soreness after i felt this stiff after this area hurt a little bit after and also paying attention to seeing if this guy's knee hurts or seeing if her lower back hurts generally i've seen um women or or smaller boned athletes um maybe people who uh have a training history uh, like she, volleyball and brazilian jiu-jitsu that's a very full body they can generally handle a little bit more volume but also people with lower body weight generally yeah, can I with would... certain ex exceptions mainly because the weight that they're lifting is a little bit lower i was going to say i think janet uh, having some experience in some um uh physical activity probably has a higher uh, higher rate of recovery so she could probably recover faster than uh if you were to give the same program to Devin williams so, you know, uh, sometimes I'm, I, I guess the way I would approach things sometimes is I would start off with the split. I, I like the uh, push pull full body. I'm sorry. I like Dan's. I do like it. Sometimes I will go to push pull legs. You know, yeah. um, I think that solely depends on surround that the, for me it depends on if I'm trying to implement certain exercises, which again, for strength and for size, I think the compound exercises, and this might be a little biased because I am a power lifter, squat bench, deadlift. lift. Um, but also just to practice the three movement patterns that the human movement system goes through, uh, a squat, a hinge, and a press pattern. Um, I got that straightly from NASM. That's just, you know, I'm NASM taught. Don't forget a row and some try to transverse movements, and rotational movements, anti-rotational frontal pain. So just general physical preparedness. Uh, tri -planer. Some triplanar. Tri so these oh. are just general physical preparedness <laughs> movements. weird right now. <laughs> movements in different ways. So you could talk about vertical, horizontal, triplanar, transverse, U-verse, I-verse, we verse Metaverse. The metaverse. Oh, you guys want to create an app? <laughs> and so you guys, <laughs> you go through, uh, put them through this phase. I would manipulate more than anything volume. Honestly, I think that the exercise, I exercise selection, section, I think exercise selection varies. I wouldn't, I think they're just going to be new from the very beginning and everything is going to be weird and funky, even maybe isolated. Yeah. First couple of weeks, work. I feel like it'd be pretty similar, um, but obviously it'd tailor off to goal specificity and then also injuries. So like, for example, like Devin, you know, um, probably be a little more focused on just a lot of hinging, a lot of hamstring activation, things to help strengthen that joint. But then obviously uh, Janet made things more like glute focused, core focused, and then depending on what the actual, I guess, injury is entailing. What do you think about like machines, barbells, um, dumbbells, free weights, You know, cables? I guess it's very, it, it kind of comes down to goal dependent and then also 
what the focus is when it comes to it's just like strictly gaining muscle you know three to five years ago i probably would have told you you got to do fucking free weights you can't do machines it's going to kill your gains but as as like uh I'm coming into my career a little bit more. I'm realizing it's just like, yeah, that's not exactly true. So stimulus is relatively the same across the board. Your muscle isn't going to get confused like between the difference of a chest press and a bench press, for example, like a machine chest press and a bench press when it comes towards stimulus and muscle growth. But then it kind of comes down to like, hey, what are their goals? Are they a barbell sport athlete? Um, are they looking to stabilize a little bit more? Are they getting hurt during certain movements like on a machine? And then kind of go from there. Yeah, I, I think it actually might be a little bit counterintuitive to start them off with free weights, especially if they have a no background in resistance training, just yeah. simply because most of the time they uh, lack the mind and muscle connection that uh, you hear about. So, um, yeah, I think I would personally start them off with a lot of more machine stuff in the beginning just to get the pumpy pump, get yeah. them activated. And then also get them maybe like, you know, tossing in doesn't have to be like a barbell squat. It could be some sort of like sit to stand. It could be a goblet squat, anything, any sort of squatting motion, just so that somebody can learn to actually just like stand up on their own. Right. Um, very different than obviously, I guess, a leg press from a functional standpoint. Right. But yeah, I, like especially new people, I do typically load a little bit more uh, machine based work, supported work, less, I guess, things that they have to focus on overall coordination with. Yeah, because sometimes it's it takes away from the overall coaching experience when the entire time they're just trying to learn how to do X, Y, Z things. And then you got to think about, especially from a coach's perspective or a trainer's perspective or all of these other perspectives in which you are operating within a certain time frame that you only and now this isn't I'm imagining that you're coaching somebody, you're training somebody, you only have an hour with them. You could spend 30 minutes trying to teach them how to bench. Or you could spend those 30 minutes doing something that's more conducive towards your goal or more productive towards your goal. Um, and, and this is the case with a lot of people. They don't have a lot of time to just figure things out, which is why they pay for coaches and pay for trainers so that yeah. they can teach them how to do things. Nothing and, wrong with spending a shit ton of time learning how to bench. I think both you and I can agree. We love benching. I love benching. Like, I love seeing like, oh, oh, that's a client win from yesterday. I forgot about that. Uh -huh. uh, one of our boys who just joined two months ago, walked in and was like, I've never really hit anything over 100, 105 pounds. Okay. It was such a big deal when he benched 135 for the first oh. time after month one. Yesterday, we did our uh, push day and it was a full body push, just like I have most of my other clients. Okay. Um, so after hitting a nice little Hatfield squat of 200 pounds, big PR for him. Yeah. Um, and then, because I guess he was just sandbagging the last couple of times. But then uh, on his bench, hit 135 for five. So it was pretty uh, exciting to watch. Was that Joe? That wasn't Joe, was no, it? No, it wasn't Joe. It was uh, Ralphie McRalph. Ralphie McRalph. Ralphie McRalph. If you're listening to this. Hey, yo. Um, I love the feeling of getting a lift there up to 135 pounds. I don't know. It's just something deal. about the first plate. Yeah. It really is. You're reliving that moment again of like, yeah, man, I remember that. But anyway, like, um, it's like we didn't really spend a whole lot of time working on specifically like his bench press. Um, it was a big deal for me, but it's not something that like I think most people need to just do consistently to get better at. We did a lot of other things like dumbbell pressing, some shoulder pressing, just generally getting his upper body stronger. And he was able to just see those gains on his bench. I was going to say, you know, one thing that I didn't hear from either of you guys is uh, progressing, but I think that that's tough to say with a general description of a nonfiction character because you know, generally you progress. That's where customization should come in place, where if you still have the same program over and over again, um, block after block with almost the same movements and there's you don't see any progression, you don't see any form of progression, whether you're progressing exercise selection, you're going from a bodyweight squat to a dumbbell squat to a barbell squat, or if you don't see any progression in terms of volume where you start off doing, I don't know, maybe less reps and then you eventually do more reps, depending on if you're in a hypertrophy focus or if you have focus towards power uh, strength training or powerlifting where you would reduce those reps and, you know, go up in weight. Yeah. 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 If you don't see that type of progress, uh, then you're not really getting a customized program. You're really just getting a cookie cutter program. So stay away, stay away. You should always see some form of progression. And sometimes progression isn't necessarily even just numbers. It's it could also be like, hey, how's velocity look on the bar? Mm. How does uh, it generally feel like RPE as like an objective objective form of measurement? 
subjective, subjective, subjective form of measurements. You know, I think that's uh, very necessary. Let's emphasize that. Like, I just want to emphasize your point. I want to, uh, let me put this. Amaria hit 150, hit her PR on bench last Thursday. Thursday before that, she also hit 150. She's hit the last three weeks. She's hit 150. First time she hit it, pretty solid. The week afterwards, kind of like an RP, like 32 out of 10. Mm -hmm. And then, <laughs> <laughs> God, I gotta show you that video. But, and then last week she hit it again and she just absolutely smoked it like a second attempt. Yeah. Should look. Um, so it's like, that's another form of progression that we can always look at. Like if you're hitting the same weight, but easier, uh -huh. it's a pr pretty good sign. Like, hey, things are going in the right direction. That, my friend, that is the true definition of strength. I I, 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 I think I got this from Jordan Feigenbaum from uh, Dr. Jordan Feigenbaum. For, or give, forgive me. Barbell medicine? Barbell medicine. I oh, love Bell medicine. So he was going on the streak where he was posting um, different uh, uh I think it was squats where it was deadlifts mm -hmm. and he, he articulated beneath in his caption that one is from a week before the other is from this week and strength is not an increase in numbers but he was defining strength as your ability to move something either faster or the intensity of this weight has reduced um in, in other words um what true strength isn't just adding five pounds week after week it's if you can add those five pounds or if you can move the same weight, but just in a way that's a lot easier, that feels a lot easier, yeah. that moves cleaner, that moves faster and whatever that means to you. It means you're making progress. That's progress for sure. Yeah. For sure. Thank you folks for getting this week's mental rep in. Tune in next week for your next mental rep on the microbiome. The mental rep. <laughs> <laughs>